All righty, boy, end of the road. I'm the last. Y'all want to stretch? Y'all want to stand up and stretch or something? You know, it's been a, it's been a long three days. I, and I've got a torn muscle in the back of my neck. I'm going to go through this very, very quickly, okay? I'm not stopping. So my head might kind of bounce around a little bit. Firstly, let me say that your work has been spectacular. I don't recall seeing another proposal which was pulled back and then reworked and put out there. Now, I thought I'm going to spend a couple of minutes. I'm going to spend one minute going through my background, just so you know who I am, because I'm not affiliated with a large financial institution or with a trade association. My background is I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., uh, I have a cousin, Calvin Copeland, who worked in this building for 25 now, years. My, my educational background is I hold an MBA in finance and a master's in economics from the University of Chicago. Now, that's important because I'm going to reference two of my University of Chicago professors in coming back and analyzing your proposal. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is that I posted my first website, which was the first investment advisor website on November 16th, 1995. So I was registered November as an investment advisor with the U.S. SEC. In, on July 3rd, 1993, I wrote to the SEC, and I warned them about a scam that I had been made aware of, the Nigerian letter scam. The SEC's scam. response was to investigate me. I'm black. You're talking Nigeria. I identified that scam. They did absolutely nothing. There were thousands and thousands of people who were damaged by that scam. On December 22nd, 2005, I testified in front of Elaine Hartman at the Division of Market Regulation at the SEC, and I let her know that my economic models indicated that a crisis was coming and that they needed to do something to tap down the, the elevated levels of fraud in the marketplace. Most recently, just to show you, I'm not making this up. I developed a financial modeling system that incorporates financial and social data to forecast economic activity. Two Mondays ago, we forecast that black uh, unemployment would fall from 9.5% to 9.1%. Last Friday, this department reported black unemployment at Use. 9 now, I believe that this, the, my experience, Helpful born here. of education Further. and experience, my operating philosophy is this. It's taken from Martin Luther King. All investors are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one investor directly affects all investors indirectly. That's what you're, you're struggling with, with, with the proposal that you put forward, which, by the way, I think is good, but this, all of these exemptions, it's, it's regulation that looks like Swiss cheese, you know? And I would suggest that you pull back and go for what you want to go for, which is a fiduciary standard that is applicable across yeah, the board. Why do you even need to have a fiduciary standard? In my testimony, which I'm not sure if you guys have. Do you guys have this? It says William Mike Cunningham. Or one of the things I want to point out is page two lists all of the issues that have occurred in the financial marketplace since about 2003. That listing rolls on to page 11. All right. These are all cases starting with the, uh, you know, some of the fraud that we observed April 28, 2003. Every major U.S. investment bank, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup, um, basically were found to have aided and abetted efforts to defraud investors. Now, I don't know if, if Goldman Sachs showed up here this week. I don't know if Bear Stearns testified. I don't know if Lehman Brothers testified. I don't know if Bernie Madoff testified. But the reason why you're doing this is because the financial marketplace is broken. Now, specifically right. how it is broken is in this way. You've had a multi-decade set of unethical business practices that have spanned every major financial institution in the country. There are hundreds of cases. Envy, hatred, greed, uh, and other negative behaviors have flourished in capital market institutions. This has propelled ethical standards of behavior downward. Now, why is this important? This is important for this reason only. Listen to me very carefully. All right. Markets cannot survive continuously elevated levels of fraud. The reason they can't survive continuously elevated levels of fraud is because fraud misallocates resources. 
from deserving companies to undeserving what companies. Happens, and we've what outlined this in our, our writings. What happens is the level of trust in the financial marketplace plummets. People don't know who they can trade with. And by the way, I was on the futures and options desk on the institutional side at Merrill Lynch. I was also director of investor relations for uh, a New York Stock Exchange 500 company. And I also managed a money market portfolio for an insurance company. So I just happen to have a very broad set of experiences that so when you have all this it. misallocation of resources, eventually markets fail. That's what you saw in 2006, 2007, and 2008. The reason why nobody's, it's probably the first time you've heard this, the reason why nobody has actually brought this to your attention is because they don't real. The, the large financial institutions did very well. They actually did very well. It was the smaller guys that got damaged. Black homeowners, Prince George's County, Wells Fargo targeted them for subprime loans. Nobody at Wells so Fargo they went did to jail. fine. I mean, you know, that, that's the issue. In wrapping up, let me point out a couple of other facts. According to the U.S. Department of the Treasury, the financial impact of the financial crisis was $19.2 trillion. A $19.2 trillion loss, all right? And if you have to look at one entity that would be responsible for that loss, it would be the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, why is the Securities and Exchange Commission responsible for that loss? Because they say their mission is to protect investors. I would submit to you that you can't say that you have competently carried out that mission when you have a $19.2 trillion loss. That loss came about because of the theory, I'm going to go back to University of Chicago now, just warning, uh, because of the theories of George Stigler, one of my professors, Capture. The institution was captured by the industry that they ostensibly regulated. This is also one of the reasons why you're getting a lot of comments, oh, let the SEC handle it. Let's, why don't you guys coordinate with the SEC? Why would you do that when they're responsible for a $19.2 trillion loss? They're incompetent with respect to this issue. I'm not saying they're bad people. They're just incompetent. They've just been captured by the industry that they are supposed to regulate. You would do well to avoid that same issue. That is also, by the way, the reason why you're getting letters from U.S. senators. Where do they get their money from? Is there a capture part of the financial regulatory structure that has embedded itself on Capitol Hill? What do you think? What do you think? Of course there is. So, so I, I know these are your bosses. I know you got to pay attention to them. I'm just saying you should factor in the regulatory capture theory as you look at what's going on. Finally, and going back to University of Chicago again, one of my professors was a guy named Merton Miller. You guys ever heard of Merton Miller? Capital asset pricing model. People have talked about modern portfolio theory up here without recognizing one key point. In the classes I took with Merton Miller, Ethical behavior was always assumed as part of the modern portfolio theory, okay? Why is ethical behavior assumed? Because of what I just told you. If ethical behavior is not a part of the marketplace, assets are allocated to companies that don't deserve the assets. And eventually, over time, 10 years, it might take 10 years, 5 years, 10 years, the markets crumble. That's what you're looking at preventing with your fiduciary standard. That's actually where you are. So I think that pretty much captures most of my testimony. If you have any comments or questions, again, I'm, and thank you for squeezing me in. Thank you, panelists, all right? They kind of squeezed me in on this thing at the last minute. Right, but you. I appreciate thank you. Thank you very much.